In this uh, month, we are talking about benefits of loving God, the benefits that are good to us because of loving the Lord. Still again from our theme that uh, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and with your neighbor as yourself. So we are talking about benefits that come to us because of loving the Lord. And today I want to tackle God's protection. Can we say God's protection? As a benefit of loving the Lord. And um, we can have it uh, projected. So protection as a benefit of loving the Lord. And if, as a start, we want to ask ourselves, what is um, protection? As the, 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 the PowerPoint comes up. Protection is defined as a defense, a shielding, as a shielding, a preservation, a security, a refuge, or a sanctuary. It can also be said to be a personal thing that protects someone or some, something. In our context, there can only be one, be only one protector. Can we say God? There can only be one ultimate protector, and that is God. And when you talk about protection as a benefit of loving God, we mean that shielding and preservation is part of the good things that accrue to those who love God. And uh, I want to give David as a classic example of divine protection. The life of King David is an example of manifest uh, divine protection. When we look at the life of David, one is, it causes one to stand in awe of how God protects those who love him. David how, recounts how as a young man, God gave him victory, as I told the young children, over a lion and a bear that had come against him, seeking to snatch away the sheep of his father from him. In First Samuel chapter 17, 34 to 35. Subsequently, David engaged with a giant called Goliath. And he was able to kill that giant. Also a vivid manifestation of God's protection. This was a seemingly impossible feat. How can a young man fight a giant? In fact, King Saul had told him, you are not able to fight against this man. He has been a man of war from his youth, but you are only a young lad. So probably many of them thought, this is the end of who? David. That's the end of life for that young boy. Goliath also despised David, ridiculing his choice of weapons as sticks. How do you come against me? Am I a dog that you're coming against me with? Sticks. But David says, I come against you in the name of the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. Naja kinyume chako, kupitia jina la mungu wa majeshi wa Israeli ambayo umekuja kinyume chake. So, God protects David and gives him a sure victory over that giant. The giant is brought down. That is also a signal to us that the giants that we face in our lives, they can be brought down. Praise be to Jesus. Some of us in our workplaces are facing giants of corruption. Giants maybe even of immorality. Somebody wants to compromise you, you put a promotion, whisper to your neighbor, you can overcome. You can bring that giant down through the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't have to compromise. So God protected David and was able to bring that giant down. And later, when David is sent on several military missions by King Saul, he is so successful in those missions that women sing praise in honor of David. That Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. This praise of David stirs up jealousy in the king, leading King Saul to attempt to kill or annihilate this young man several times, but God enables David to escape severally. In 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 10 to 12, 
He says that the next day a spirit of distress sent from God came upon Saul. And he prophesied inside the house while Saul, David played the harp as usual. Now Saul was holding a spear and he held it thinking I will pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. So Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him. And he had departed from Saul. Say many amen. That King Saul tried to kill David. He tried to finish him. But he was not able because the Lord was with David. Bwana asifi san. Alikuwa pamoja na Daudi. Na kamlinda, na kamuifadhi. So he can say that, yes, later he can say that I was a young man, and now I am old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Praise be to Jesus. So David is a classic example of divine protection. And um, David is also forced to flee and hide himself in the wilderness, where King Saul, again, relentlessly, pursues him to destroy him. However, David miraculously is preserved by God from all the attempts on his life. At one point, King Saul was on one side of the mountain and David was on the other side of the mountain. Because the Lord was protecting him. Praise be to Jesus. So if the Lord is your protector, you don't fear. This is what your neighbor again, don't fear. Yeah, don't fear what man can do to you. Because the Lord is well, well, well able to protect you. He's well able to protect us. He's well able to surround us with his goodness and his love and his mercy. Praise be to Jesus. I also want to talk about the testimony of Ezra. From our first Bible reading today, we find Ezra the priest in a very compromising situation. He's in a quagmire of sorts. He has just been handed over silver and gold and vessels for use in the temple at Jerusalem. Remember, he's, he has been in the Babylonian captivity. And a decree has come. Those who want to go back to, to, to the land of Israel can go. So God grants favor before Ezra and the Israelites who were in captivity, and they begin to move in groups, and one is led by Ezra. So Ezra is given instruments of gold and silver to take to Jerusalem. So Ezra, the Bible says, is ashamed to ask for a security detail. Given his previous testimony to the king, that I, the hand of our God is gracious to all who seek him, but his great anger is against all who forsake him. So, amekiri kwamba mungu anaweza kutuhifadhi. Sasa anaibika kusema basi, lakini nipe maska, maskari wanilinde, watulinde. That would be a negation of his testimony. So, he says they, they fasted and they prayed and they petitioned God for protection. And he granted their request. Praise be to Jesus. Yes, Ezra was aware that there were bandits along the way. And he therefore declares a fast to seek divine protection. And God grants that request. This is also an encouragement to, for you and I who are seeking God for his divine protection in your life or his divine intervention in your life. He's well able to protect us from all harm and danger. The psalmist has this to say in the book of Psalms 56, verses 2 and 4. When I am afraid, I will trust in the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. Whisper to neighbor, unapogopa, weka tumainu lako ndani ya buwana. E hofu inapokuja, when fear comes, as the psalmist is saying, when I am afraid, I will trust in the Lord. The truth of the matter, fear at times comes, isn't it? Hallelujah. Fear of defeat, fear of um, being killed and so on. But somebody here is saying that when I am afraid, I will trust in the Lord. Therefore, I will not be afraid. What can man do unto me? 
if God is on my side, then who can be against me? So Ezra is a testimony that yes, he was afraid, but he sought the Lord and the Lord heard him. He, he fasted and he prayed and God came through for him. Praise be to Jesus. God can also come through for you and protect you from all harm and danger. Protect you from, from shame. Wherever you are, in your place of work, where there's, those uh, compromises are there, God is able to protect you. God is able to compromise to nakufuta kazi. Hello? Like these NYS sagas, isn't it? Eh? Now somebody wants to eat the billions, and you're saying, Mimi sifanya nini? Siweki kidole. Anasema, tutapita na we? Tutapita na wewe. Unaweza kusema apana. Mufanya nini ya musifanye mimi si, I'm not, si, 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 um, si nami. I'm not bowing to that corruption. And God, who you trust, is able to protect you. Praise be to Jesus. In our second uh, reading, in the book of Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 11, the deliverance of the apostle Peter. After the resurrection and subsequent ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, the apostles received the infilling of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, and they began to declare the gospel of salvation through Jesus Christ boldly. Can somebody say boldly? And the Lord confirmed their preaching with phenomenal miracles that were performed by their hands. This preaching put the apostles or the apostles on a collision course with the Jewish leadership, both secular and religious. In this particular instance, King Herod, he violently persecuted the church. And in the process of persecuting the church, he laid his hands on one of the apostles called James, the son of Zebedee, brother to who? John, the son of Zebedee. And he killed him. Can we say killed him? And you can ask, what happened? Did God abandon his people? These were his apostles. No, we say that, that, that God is sovereign. And his desired will and his mind, the searching of his mind cannot be uh, questioned. What he has purposed, he has purposed. So John, uh, 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 James was killed, a sad eventuality indeed. And seeing when Herod saw that this action pleased the other Jews who are, who are fighting the church, who are against this new gospel of salvation through Christ, he proceeded to lay his hands on Peter the the leader of the church, and he put him in prison. And he assigned four squads of four guards each to protect, or to, 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 to protect, uh, 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 not to protect, to make sure that Peter does not get out of prison. Guarded by 16 uh, soldiers in shifts of four each. When this report reached the church, they immediately, can somebody say immediately, they began to intercede without ceasing on behalf of Peter. And remember there is the report they had already received that James Alishikwa last week and amefanya nini? Amewawa. Sasa wameshika nani pete? Petero. They had a choice of either accepting that there is no hope for Peter, resigning him to his fate. Hakuna hope, hakuna tumaini. They could have gone in that direction and said, There is no hope for Peter. Wacha to Tengeneze Kamati. Yamazish, hello. Who can I talk? Who can I talk? He can't get out of that place. If James they have killed, sasa Peter kondani, wacha tutengeneza kamati ya nini? Ya mazishi, tuandai mapema vile tutakaya mzika. But they chose the opposite direction. Praise be to Jesus. We thank God for these early Christians. They were not ready to let Peter go. They said, ah, apana, we cannot lose him. 
they immediately went into intercession mode and they prayed without ceasing for Peter. The rest is a testimony. Praise be to Jesus. Whisper to your neighbor, arise and pray. Hey, arise and intercede. Arise. Don't let things just go. Your marriage is facing problems. You say, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the Eh hey, mambo yameharibika katika kwako kikazini uko karibu kufutwa kazi hapana usiachilie ambia jirani yako there is there is a god in heaven there is a god in heaven who hears prayer and is able to intercede is able to to, to to intervene and to bring a change praise be to jesus and as when they went on their knees when they they prayed without ceasing the god who reigns from heaven above, he came through for them. Praise be to Jesus. He came through for Peter. Akaja na kutuma malaika wake. This was now business unusual. God sends an angel to rescue Peter. And as we have read, he tells him to guard himself and follow him. And the gates opened miraculously. And Peter soon found himself on the streets free. Praise be to Jesus. For me, this is a, 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 a testimony to the very present divine protection and deliverance of God. My call to us is don't give up. Call on God in those seemingly hopeless times and circumstances and he's able to come through for you. Praise be to Jesus. He is well able. Whisper to your neighbor, God is well able. Aya hujamwambia kama mtu anaamini. Mwambie he is well able. Eh? He is well able to come through for you in that circumstance. Maybe the doctors have given a report kwamba wewe mambo yako imefika imefika mwi mwisho. Hakuna tumaini. Huyu aenda nyumbani afanya nini? Eh? Unaenda nyumbani kufa. I have given you a testimony of uh, uh, a friend, we call him Babu. Babu should be now, he's a minister of the gospel. And I, I'm, 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 one of the days I will bring him here and he'll give his testimony. Mm, that uh, he had gone uh, when he was a minister about 20 something years ago, maybe 25 years ago. He was diagnosed with chronic asthma. He was also diagnosed with a brain tumor. And he went to America, his friends, he had some friends in America, and when they went there, when he went there, the Americans, they took him to one of the best hospitals there. And when they had done their own uh, uh, scrutiny, they said, your brain tumor is so large, it is inoperable. Haiwezi kufanya nini? Kuchinjwa, ikichinjwa, wewe utafanya nini? Oh, takufa, how to amuka hapa. Hey, Mama Faith, your, your, your story ni kweli. <laughs> hey, hey, ni diyo mshuda wangu. Mwana aswe sana, hako pale. Anasema ni ukweli. So, Babu, as we call him, Mama Pulei, um, he was also examined on, the, on his the, uh, chronic asthma. And they said, this asthma is chronic. We cannot be able to treat. So he came back home. They told him, well, you come home. What was he coming to do? He was coming to die. And you, 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 he was telling us that uh, from the place where he lives, it's, it's called Olosos. From Olosos to where the, the church is, is about uh, three kilometers. So he, the asthma was so bad, he could not be able to walk. So he was only at home. Um... Because of the brain tumor, he had a migraine, a, a constant headache that was never ceasing. Ata akinyo madao haituli? Haituli. But in his ministry, he had been so, so busy that he had not had time to even feed his own souls. So now he was benched. Tell you never benched. Sometimes God can bench you, eh? Take you home, eh? Ukai pale. So at that time, he told us he began to 
have a lot of time to read the word of God. He also began to read spiritual books and his faith began to grow. He also began to watch a program. There was somebody who used to be called Paul Yongicho. Have you ever heard of him? He was a preacher from Korea. He used to preach on the television. So one day he saw Yongicho preaching on the television and he said, if I want to pray with you, and you may be watching me from a very, very far. Can you lay your hand on where you are sick and let us believe God for prayer? And he laid his hands. He told us in Kimasai Logonya, eh, the head. And as the, 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 the man of God on the other side began to pray, and he felt the power of God fall on him. And he told us that night he slept like a baby. No need of, of dawas. Praise be to Jesus. So as I was meeting this man of God, not yesterday, this is a miracle that took place over 20 years ago. When I met him in 1996, 97, the miracle had already taken place. Praise be to Jesus. And met him, now he, he was able to drive his vehicle. Because he used to tell us that when the brain tumor was at its worst, he would be driving a vehicle and would fall asleep as he's driving and find himself in the bush. But he was healed. There's a God in heaven. So today he's, he's free from asthma. He's free from, the, from the, 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 the brain tumor miraculously. I want to say that there is no situation that is hopeless before God. Praise be to Jesus. There's a God who hears prayer. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Seek the Lord in prayer. Seek him. And he will come through for you. Praise be to Jesus. He's well able. Don't give up. He's able to protect you. He's able to, to deliver you from your, the enemy and set you free. Because he is God and he's Lord and he's God and he's king. I also want to say that uh, um, I want to say that God promises divine blessing and protection to those whom he calls. Praise be to Jesus. In the book of Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 following, this is a story we know so, so much about this man called Abraham. When God called him, in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, what did he say? The Lord said to Abraham, go out from your land, from your, your relatives and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I'll make you into a great nation. I will bless you. Can we say bless you? I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. And verse 3, I will bless those who bless you. I will also curse those who curse you. And all the peoples on the earth will be blessed by you. So divine blessings and protection. Blessings that I will bless those who bless, bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. That is, God is putting a hedge of protection around the descendants of Abraham. There's something called uh, there's, maybe one time I'll teach on blessings and curses. You can choose. So those, there's a curse that comes from something called anti-Semitism. If you speak against Israel, I'm sorry, you have touched the apple of God's eye and there's a curse over your life. Hello? And um, one time as I was reading about um, uh, those blessings and curses, that there was a man who had actually uh, grown up in an Islamic community. And almost every day, they wake up and curse Israel. So he was a businessman. And he was always in debt. You'd make um, uh, $400,000 only to, to spend. You'd be in debt 800, so times two. So he was in a vicious cycle of debt. Until one day he was... He was convicted, and he came to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he repented of his anti-Semitism. And that 
a cycle of curse was broken from his life. So God promises divine blessings and protection to those whom he calls. If he has called you, he will bless you and he will protect you. Praise be to Jesus. There's also something I'm also noting. Calling, called a generational blessings. Can we say generational? In the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verses 15, arising from God's, from David's love and devotion to the Lord, the Lord promises to bless David's child or successor and establish his kingdom. In this particular case, it was Solomon that I will bless you because you love me. I will do what? I will bless your seed. Praise be to Jesus. Nitabariki mbegu yako. alitimisa. This was when David had had a desire. He was telling, the, 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 he told Nathan the prophet, I am living in a house with a, with a, a cedar ceiling, but the, the the Ark of the Covenant dwells in a tent. It is in my mind to build a temple to the house of the Lord. For the, for, the, for the Ark of the Lord. Nathan told him, go ahead and do it. But then the Lord speaks to Nathan and tells him, go and tell my servant. Whisper to your neighbor, my servant. Go and tell my servant David that it is not you who will build, but you, the son that will come from you. He is the one who will build my house. Praise be to Jesus. And David was, uh, and I establish his kingdom forever. That shocked David. What do you mean, God? That you're not only going to bless me, but you shall bless my, my seed for, uh, forever. Hey, hey, that uh, shocked David. And he was there giving thanks to the Lord. He was giving thanks to the Lord for what he has done. So I want to say that if you fear the Lord and you love the Lord, not, God's blessings will not only come to you, but also to your, cho to your children and your children's children. Buana as if you're son. Hallelujah. Because you fear the Lord. In one of my parishes, um, one of the rural parishes that I've been, I remember there was a, there was a certain a couple I saw, an old Man and lady, they are now have gone to be with the Lord. Um, at that time, they had already celebrated their 50 years anniversary in marriage. Hello? They had already celebra celebrated their 50 years anniversary in marriage. And the, these were, were people who came to Christ in the, in the 30s, 1930s. And they were the ones who were also faced by the, the Mau Mau um, um, rebellion and so on and they refused to take the oath hello they were ready to die but they refused to take the oath and when I looked at their lives I saw divine favor and blessings and when I also looked at their children I saw hey these children are not ordinary there's something special about them and I say these blessings have not come from their, their own hard work, but from their parents. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I saw that, hey, these children are, are doing so well. By that time, over maybe about 13 years ago, they already had a company of their own and were prospering in um, the hospitality industry. One of them was an architect and, and so on and so forth. I saw manifold blessings. And I said, this is because of the parents. Praise be to Jesus. So arising from David's love and devotion to the Lord, the Lord promises to bless David's children or child and successor and establish his kingdom. But there's something I want to note as I, I am coming to a conclusion is that perpetuation of parental blessings is conditional. Can somebody say conditional? is conditional on unwavering on obedience to who? To the Lord. In 1 Kings chapter 3 and verses 14, Solomon has now built the temple as God spoke through the prophet Nathan that your son David is the one who is going to build the temple. Solomon rose up 
and he became a mighty man and he built the temple. But in this particular moment, as he's, uh, as he's uh, in prayer, Solomon is asked by the Lord in a dream, what do you want me to give to you? He asked for wisdom. Can we say wisdom? And when he, he prays for wisdom, God is pleased with him. And he promises to give him even what he has not asked for, wealth. Because you have not asked for wealth, I'll give it to you. You have not asked for the life of your enemies. I will give you what you have asked for. I will give you what you have asked for, wisdom, and I'll also give you even what you have not asked for, wealth. Nobody shall be as wealthy as you. But he is told this. Can you say, but? However, the Lord says this. If you walk in my ways and keep my statutes and commandments, just as your father David did, then, can somebody say then? Then I will prolong your days. Praise be to Jesus. Nita kuzidishia mnini? Masi? Masiku. Nenga atoma, nenga kuingeheria matuko. Wanje tigira. Praise be to Jesus. So tell your neighbor, conditional. Blessings are what? Conditional. Perpetuation of parental blessings. is not automa. And that's what I want to say, even speak to our children here. Some of us, you children, you, you have parents who fear the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. But those, the blessings that have come to you from your parents are not automatic. It will depend also on how you walk with who? With God. Tell you, but it's not automatic. It's not automatic that the blessings that we have received because those of us who have the privilege of having parents who fear the Lord. Not everybody has that privilege. But if you have a privilege of having a, a parent who fears the Lord, there's an extra hand of, or, or, or portion of blessing over your life. Hallelujah. We should be grateful for. You have an edge over the others. But I want to say that edge is not automatic. It is dependent on how you will walk with God. Praise be to Jesus. It is dependent on whether you will perpetuate that relationship of the fear of God, of walking in his ways. That is what will determine whether God's blessings will continue to be with you. So I'm saying to extend the chain of protection and blessing, you must individually continue in the fear of the Lord. Continue in the fear of the Lord. If you are already there. If you are not there yet, there. Praise be to Jesus. Because I may be saying you are, uh, continue and you are not yet, you're not yet where? There. And I want to say with this with a bit of sadness. And I'm saying the Bible records all these things. As a what? Can we say as an example? It records all these things as, a, as an example such that you, you and I don't fall where the others have fallen. Where those other generations of saints have fallen. The Lord is equipping us that we may not fall when the test comes. Praise be to Jesus. When the push and shove comes, that you and I will not compromise. Hallelujah. Solomon, unfortunately, he broke the chain. How? If you read 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 to 13, the Bible says, And Solomon loved many women. He had how many wives? Seven? Seven hundred and three hundred? Tell me about a thousand. And to make matters worse, the Bible says, from the nations the Lord had commanded the Israelites not to intermarry with, with. Because they had been told, if you marry from the, 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 uh, the nations from which I'm driving out from you, they shall also cause you to do the abominations that they are do. The things that are, that are causing me to cast them out from that land. They will cause your children to do the same things. And I will be annoyed with them. So Solomon did what? The Bible says he clove to those women in love. And the Bible says something for me that is very interesting. If you read, I'm not, I'm not giving Tell your neighbor, read the Bible. 
Yeah, go and read First Kings chapter 11, verse 1 to 13. It says, and when Solomon was old, hello, old, when he was old, the Bible says his wives turned away his heart from following the law. So maybe they conspired. So kazeka koko kana kanaenda kwa boma hiki kanaambiwa kwamba huko hakuna chaku <laughs> unless unijengee nini sanamu ya kule ulinito unless you build for me a what an idol from of the place you you removed me from so he had married the daughter of pharaoh so he he must have built what the sun god eh, eh he, he had married the daughter of the the princess of the, uh, the king of Moab, so another god. So he, he filled Jerusalem with what? Gods. And some of these are Ashtaroth and other funny things. So um, abominations. Tell your neighbor abominations. And the Bible says God was angry with Solomon. Just the way he had been pleased, now he's what? Angry. And he said, because you have done this, I will take away or I will divide your kingdom. And surely his kingdom was divided. But he was told, because of my servant David, I'll not do it in your lifetime, but I'll do it in the lifetime of your sir. Whisper to neighbor, don't break the chain. I will do it in the life of your son. So in the life of Rehoboam, out of 12 of tribes, he lost 10. Akabaki shangapi? That is a lesson. Praise be to Jesus. What I'm saying is this. Perpetuation of parental blessings is conditional on unwavering obedience to the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. If you continue to fear the Lord, if I continue to fear the Lord, the blessings of my mother who feared the Lord will also accrue to uh, to 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 a na faith, but if I don't fear the Lord, I will break the chain. And instead of a blessing coming to my children, a curse will come to them. God forbid. Can tell your neighbor, God forbid. That diro no ikinyerioke because of your sin and my sin. So that's why we need to, to walk with the Lord and not to compromise our faith. Praise be to Jesus. Not to compromise our faith. Keep to the Lord. And I want to say, if you keep to the Lord, you will perpetuate the protection and blessings accorded to your predecessors. Don't cut the chain. Rather perpetuate. Praise be to Jesus. Usivunje. Yo nyororo ya baraka. Na ulinzi ambayo mungu ameweka ndani ya maisha yako. Kupitia wazazi wako. E, sisi ambao ni watu waze kidogo. Kuna wazazi wetu pengine akina show show. Na kukaa wale waliogopa mungu. Kuna hiyo sehemu ya baraka wali kuachia. Usiishie isi, kwako. Ifikishe kwa wale wengine. Praise be to Jesus. Na kwa wale ambao ni watoto hapa. I urge you by the masses of God. Don't break the chain. Continue in the fear of the Lord. And those blessings will not only be yours, but they will also get to the next generation. Praise be to Jesus. That is yet to come. That is yet to come. We were challenged the other day, remember the evangelist. We were challenged the other day by Reverend Esther and Jerry Wainaina. She came to, to preach to us as the, the, the staff in this, non-teaching staff in this institution. And she told us something very profound, which I would want to repeat. So I, I'm giving credit. See your angle. Hello. She told us um, when we minister to children, like now in the SPA, we are not just giving, uh, producing academic giants. We also want to produce what? Tell you, spiritual giants. The Davids of tomorrow, who shall be able to fear the Lord and walk in his ways. So, she told us that as we are affecting this generation and planting 
the word of God and the fear of God in their lives, we are impacting many generations to come. What, what, what do we mean? Watoto wanakuja at age what? Cheke chair. See, at three years of age, that child has the opportunity to live another how many years? At 60. 70 or akikuzidishiwa na mungu 80, sindiyo? The other day we met Ashosho, who is now 90 years of age. Eh, wale wa district ya Imani. Kusuna Ashosho tulikuta. The mother to uh, uh, Mr. Wainaina. She's sharp. 90 years of age. He generation wakishindwa kuimba, wukoithia, ya anachukulia pale wameshi? Hey. <laughs> She was a challenge to us. And if you look at her, you'll not say she's 90. You'll say she's 70. So I'm saying, so if there's a, a, a lady like that, maybe let us say then 80 years. So if I am impacting somebody who shall be there 80 years from now, that person will also impact what? Another 80 year? And that person can also impact another what? So if you do your work seriously, if we don't joke around, you can be impacting 150 years from now. Praise be to Jesus. When you and I shall no longer be there, so can we fear the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. So whisper to your neighbor, perpetuate the chain. The chain of ble blessings and protection. Isishie kwako. Isishie kwango. And may the Lord help you and may the Lord help me. And where we have maybe done things that can, like Solomon has done, well, like Solomon did, that can cause God's favor to be removed from you. You repent quickly. Come back to the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. Come back to the Lord. Tell him, Lord, forgive me. Remove that thing from me. And I want to walk in your ways. And I assure you that blessings and favor of God will accompany you, even in the days ahead. Praise be to Jesus. So with those few many words, may the Lord bless us. May the Lord minister to us and may we perpetuate the chain of blessings and protection. And there's a God who protects. Praise be to Jesus.